Hello everyone, I am Vibhu Agarwal. Uh, the title of our work is Way Back Then, a data-driven view of 25 plus years of web evaluation. This work is, from my, is with my uh, PhD advisor, Professor Nishan Shastri. So this is a screenshot of the first web page that was put up by Sir Tim Berners-Lee at CERN nearly 30 years ago. Since then, the World Wide Web has been expanding drastically year on year, and it is estimated that at least uh, 1,200 petabytes of data is there already. Uh, so, so we all know that social media platforms such as Orkut that were very popular back in the days are nowhere to be found now, and they were and they are uh, completely replaced by Facebook, Instagram, and other social media platforms. Likewise, uh, GeoCities was the very popular uh, web hosting website back in 1990s, and it's nowhere right now currently. And while uh, while everybody talks about uh, websites such as TikTok, which are gaining traction these days. So this study is one of the first attempts to address the two main gaps. First is, a quantitative understanding of the web history based on the data that we collected. And this study is also uh, uh, studies how the web has evolved over a long period of 25 plus years. Uh, so in this uh, kind of historical data-driven studies, uh, the first main challenge is collecting the historical data. So to, uh, to tackle that, uh, first, we started uh, with the websites list curation. For that, uh, we collected the top 100 websites globally from Alexa.com. Alexa.com is an internet company which provides or which curates the list of top websites globally along with their traffic information during November 2021 with the following information. First is uh, daily time on the website, which is the average time spent per visitor on the, on the particular website. Second is daily page views per visitor, which is the average number of page views. And, and also we obtained the website categories for these uh, top 100 websites with fortiguard.com. So in total, we get 24 distinct website categories for these top 100 global websites. Now, once we have the list of these websites, now here comes how do we collect the historical data? So we use the Wayback Machine, also known as the Internet Archive, which uh, maintains the uh, historical data of the website since 1996. So, so the historical website data for these Alexa top 100 websites is crawled uh, from uh, archive.org using Selenium uh, web driver. So in total, we crawled about 2,400 Internet Archive pages for these 100 websites from 1996 to 2021. And it, was, and it was related to the information related to different mime types or media types, let's say uh, images, videos, text, and how they have been changed uh, since, the inception, since inception of these websites. Also, uh, we also leverage Google Trends uh, from where we could get the data related to the search term popularity of the websites. Uh, since 2004, because since it's the earliest timestamp from where we could collect data from Google Trends. Also, the number of visits each website from 1996 to 2021 uh, was obtained uh, from media and benchmark reports in a particular YouTube channel, Data is Beautiful and Wikipedia. So these were the data sources that we used. So all this data set uh, and code is available uh, through this following link. Now, after data crawling, the important step is the analysis part. First is the dynamics of the web popularity. Uh, in this section, we study how uh, the web popularity has changed. Uh, first of all, we look at the relative popularity of different Alexa websites at present, and then we look at how they are, uh, how it has been how the website's popularity have changed over time. And then in the second part, we look at 
the increase in the website complexity and how there has been a slow shift from the text based to the more image and video oriented uh, media and websites. So first of all, uh, moving ahead, let's look at the dynamics of the web popularity. To begin with, uh, this bar plot shows the uh, different website categories that we obtain for these top 100 Alexa websites, along with the number of websites. So we know that uh, the highest number of websites equal to 21 belongs to the search engine category. And out of these 21, seven domains are just the Google variants belonging to different countries like google.co.uk, google.co.jp, and so on. Also, uh, four adult and pornographic websites appear in Alexa top 100 websites. The next power plot shows the average daily time, stem, uh, average daily time spent on a particular website per visitor. So here, like how visitors, how much time visitors spent on each of the website category. So we found that interestingly, visitors spend the most time on the business related websites such as alibaba.com, which provides a lot of services. And in social networking website, uh, Facebook is at the top with 18 minutes as the average time spent. Now, uh, now we have looked at the popularity at present. Now let's look at changes in popularity over time. So this line plot shows the comparison between Yahoo and Google in terms of the uh, relative search popularity. Uh, this data we obtained from Google Trends. So on the y-axis, interest over time is actually the relative search popularity for these two companies on search engine uh, Google. So interestingly, as we can see that uh, till 2011, uh, Yahoo, uh, Yahoo had more number of searches than Google. And this is pretty much interesting because, uh, because Yahoo had more number of searches on Google than Google itself on, on Chrome. And afterwards, uh, from uh, 2011 onwards, Google became a dominant search engine leaving behind Yahoo. Moving ahead, if you look at uh, several social media websites, so, so we see that uh, till 2008, Orkut and MySco, uh, MySpace were the most widely used social networking websites. But only around 2008, uh, they were replaced by Facebook and later on by Twitter. Also, uh, WhatsApp became super popular instant messaging application, uh, leaving behind other social media platforms. These days, uh, we talk about TikTok quite a lot, although it's increasing quite a bit, but still it's nowhere as compared to other uh, very big social media platforms such as Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. So, so the last plot in this series is the comparison between Facebook and Google uh, in terms of the relative search uh, popularity. In, in, 20, uh, in 2008, Facebook surpassed Google in Google Trends popularity and reached its peak around 2013 to 14. And after 2018 Cambridge Analytica scandal, Facebook's popularity has been deteriorated. Now uh, let's look at this bar plot, which shows uh, the percentage of visits uh, per visitor uh, for the top 10 websites that we crawl across each or each of the years. So as we can see, like uh, during 1995 to 1998, search engines such as Yahoo and Alta Vista secured more than 80% of the visits across the web. Also 30% uh, of the website visits were education based as, as shown in this blue colored bar, but then slowly, uh, their rank decreased and there has been a shift from education to more of the entertainment purposes. Also news websites became uh, online uh, in 1998 to 2000, but then slowly uh, it shows a decreasing trend and disappear from the, from the list of top 10 websites after 2005. 
while these news websites were replaced by social media websites in 2005 and streaming media such as YouTube in 2010. So the new rise in popularity of online news websites is shown in 2021. It's presumably a side effect of COVID-19 pandemic. So now, so far we have looked at the website popularity. Now let's look at how uh, uh, with the accessibility of more and more internet, how the web has become more complex. This bar plot shows the number of distinct media types or MIME times per category of the website. As we can see that since 1998 uh, till today, there has been a five-fold increase in different media types from 19 to uh, 113. So that means now browsers these days have to become more and more complex because they have to render, like they have to handle more than 100 distinct type of content. Also, there has been a rapid increase in the number of different application specific MIME types. Moving ahead, uh, this uh, line plot shows the number of new URLs for different MIME types for a specific category, in this case, social networking category. Here, new URLs indicate, uh, so in a particular web page, uh, all these media types such as photos or images that are loaded are uh, have a specific request once the, once the basic or HTML template is loaded, right? So the, every new URL, uh, indicates an additional complexity in renting a particular web page. So this, uh, so these two line plots shows that there has been a rise in the URLs of MIME types of the application category. Application here indicates JavaScript, JSON, and so on. Starting 2005, there has been a rapid increase in the application types. Uh, um, with, because of the rise in AJAX and the RESTful uh, programming paradigms. Uh, similarly, the usage of web, uh, the, uh, the usage of images and other non-text uh, MIME types appear to increase as the internet bandwidth availability increases. For the more detailed analysis, please refer to our paper. Moving ahead, uh, let's look at the number of new URLs for, for uh, image MIME type now. So, Instead of looking at a specific type of media, we look at the subtype of the image media type. So in 1998 and 2000, GIF and JPEG images were dominant. But since early 2000s, PNG has started uh, to emerge as a common choice. And also vector graphics such as SVGs have started to be used as images as well. So similar trends were observed for other uh, media types as well. Uh, for that, please refer to our paper. So what are the key takeaways from this kind of uh, data-driven studies? So it provides a quantitative evidence of the evolution of the web. And it provides several evidences for interesting patterns based on the historical data, such as decline in the popularity of GeoCities and Yahoo and other websites. Also the loss of the education and the rise of the uh, social and streaming media websites instead. Also, it shows that uh, the web has become increasingly complex with a five-fold increase in the media types from 19 to 113 over the years. So uh, I would like to reiterate that for the benefit of the research community, we make this data set and code publicly available. So, uh, that's the end of the presentation. Thanks all for listening, and I'm happy to answer any of your queries.